Hello, learners. Uh, welcome to our segment today. I am instructor CPA Ringo Frederick. And today's session, I want us to look at uh, financial management. And uh, the question that I want us to handle today is a question that I was attested in uh, December 2024. A very interesting question of financial management, which was attested in December 2024. And the concept that we'll be handling today is all about discounting techniques. This question was attested in December 2024, question number three, part C. Question number three, part C. So this is uh, question three, part C. Mm -hmm. So the whole uh, concept is uh, about uh, discounting technique. Remember, Molimo mentioned that uh, at all times, you can't pass management accounting very well or uh, very easily. If at all, you don't have a clear knowledge of uh, TVM. That is a time value of money. See? You can't pass management accounting clearly if at all you don't have this information well. So uh, looking at this question, I want us to see how what you are required to do in this part. That is a uh, December 2024, question number three. See, I'm displaying the question here so that all of us can be able to view it and see what you are required to do. So, of course, I want to go into details in relation to TVM because I've been guiding you over and over and over again. By now, we should be having it in our fingertips, right? So, uh, looking at uh, this part, a good examiner here told us this, that you're having this beautiful company known as Safari Limited, which is contemplating a purchase of a motor van for their rental business activities. The farmer expects that... Uh, the investments in the motor van shall generate annual after-tax cash benefits of 300000 and that they can sell it for 150000 after five years. So this is salvage value as at the end of the period, I can sell this motor van at how much? 150. All the, uh, talk about, uh, we told that uh, all the monies for purchasing uh, the van shall come from the farm savings, which are currently earning at uh, which are currently earning an interest rate of 16% per annum. That is after tax. That is after tax. So look at the required. The required part one of the question. We are required to compute the maximum price payable to acquire the van today, which it is time zero. Then, assuming that the firm is uh, of a good credit rating and that it chooses to borrow the funds instead of using its uh, instead of using its uh, savings, the firm has two alternative financing options of raising the funds as provided below. Option one, finance company. Option two, insurance company. So, using suitable computation, advise the management of the firm of the suitable financing option to apply. So once you've been given that question, my good students, as I've always said, the first thing that you should always do, by now I know you know what Molly is going to say, right? The first thing that you must always tend to do when you're having such a question is to smile. Because you have the knowledge, so what you're doing is simply applying the same. So the catch or rather clue here is that we are required to compute the maximum price payable to acquire the van today. So in this context, a good examiner is taking us back to the concept of present value. For present value, we normally tend to talk over two forms for of present value. We normally tend to talk about the present value of an annuity, and we normally tend to talk about the present value of a lump sum. So if I can remind you, for annuity, remember, We'll always be talking of this factor, present value interest factor, annuity given the rate number of years. Whereas for lump sum, we'll always be talking about present value interest factor given the rate number of years. So these are what we must always tend to have in mind. So in this context, we can see that a good examiner has given us the concept of whatever that we can pay on an annual basis, whereas as at the end of the day, this is annual income that I'll be receiving then towards the end or as at the end of the period i can dispose of this motor van and i'm going to still get a value out of it so therefore bringing in the two concepts of annuity and lump sum together in one question 
That's the beautiful part with that question, right? So, in this case, it is upon us to ask ourselves what values do we have for annuity and what values do we have for lump sum? We can clearly see that uh, on annuity, on annuity, we were given a value of 300,000. Whereas for lump sum, we were given a value of 150,000. So once we have this data, and in this case, identify the R rate given here, we are told 16%, right? And the period to consider, if at all you can check our question clearly, we can see the period we are given how many years we are given. Uh, the firm expects an investment of motor one shall generate annual after tax cash flows and that they shall sell it for 150 after five years. So therefore, we agree that our N in this context will be five years. See? So once we have this data, we are very good to go. Once we have this data, we are very good to go. Why? Because on my present value, what we are required to determine today, and that is what you are asked, to compute the maximum price payable to acquire the one today. So that is our present value. We should be talking of our present value to be equal to our amount which I'm having annuity times present value interest factor annuity given the rate number of years we are going to add my good students the value which is our lump sum value so we have the lump sum amount times present value interest factor given our rate number of years see so these are what will be required to do so summarizing this task, then we'll agree that we need to achieve our factor, which will be very important. We start with present value interest factor annuity, given our rate number of years. We should all recall our formula, where we normally tend to talk about 1 minus into 1 plus R, 0 0.16, divide by R, which is 0 0.16, raised for negative N, which is 5 years. We're asked for the other one, present value interest factor, given our rate number of years, being a lump sum, 1 plus R, which is 0.16, raised to power negative N, which is 5. Because once you have determined this factor, it's as if you're very good to go with that question. So, in this context, what will you be having? 1.16 uh, raised to power negative 5. Of course, the 1 minus answer. We divide by 0 0.16 into two into four decimal places. Molimu is getting this factor 3.2743. This is a factor that Molimu is getting. We are asked for the other one, uh, that is for lump sum. Molimu is getting this factor because now this is simple, we just take it the way it is. We do have 1.16 raised to the power negative 5. In this context, you can see we're getting a value into a uh, four decimal, 0 0.4761. See? So once you have determined this, then the rest of the things will be very easy. Why? And that's why the reason why Morim was saying we should smile, right? Because the next element to consider will be for us to determine our present value. The amount today I'd be having, the amount which is 300,000 times my factor, which is 3.2743. We are going to add, of course, the 150 lump sum value times our factor, which is 0 0.4761. So that as at the end of the day, what will be our present value? As at the end of the day, my good students, our present value, we are getting a value of 300,000 times 3.2743. We add 150,000 times 0 0.4761, which would give us a value of 1,053,000. I'm getting 1,053,705.
so you can confirm if that is also what you are getting. So you'll find that uh, the tested part here, it was upon us to look at uh, this question and determine the part of what? The part of, uh, or rather looking at it in the concept that uh, we need to determine, of course, what was the present value, what you're supposed to pay, of course, today. And that is what you're required to do. Remember, our classes for financial management are on. We've only done part uh, A, of course, we are going to do the other part. So remember, like, uh, our classes are on for all the classes of our CPA. If at all you've not joined us for this semester, me, I'm not sure what you're waiting for, by the way. I'm not sure what you're waiting for. The classes are on, and as I've always mentioned, we normally tend to have two packages. The first package, you control your own timetable. You study at your own time. The second package is where you join the classes as per our timetable. So if you've not joined all these classes, I don't know what you're waiting for. It might seem to be a very uh, long semester, but trust you me, April is just here. We just pray to God to give us health. We just pray to God to give us, of course, uh, good health. And you just see, April is just here. So if you've not joined our class, kindly do so before it is too late. Right, our number, of course, to reach us out, you can always reach us out on 7 or 708-068-851, my good students, and we'll guide you on how you can join our classes. So, I want us to meet in the next segment just after this. For those who are watching via YouTube, I'll be attaching the link of the next session just below this video. Make sure you watch it out and we handle part two together. To this point, thank you so much. Let me see you in the next session. Bye-bye.